What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to explore a key topic from the CompTIA Tech Plus exam, operating systems. We'll discuss what an operating system is, its key roles, and the different types of operating systems in the computing world. We'll cover everything from how the operating system acts as an interface between applications and hardware to its responsibilities in disk management, task management, device management, and more. First, let's talk about the interface between applications and hardware. So an operating system acts as a bridge between hardware like your CPU, memory, and disk drivers and software applications like web browsers, word processors, and games. Think of it as a translator. It allows applications to use hardware resources effectively without needing to know the complexities of how the hardware works. So here's an example. When you open an application like a word processor, the application requests resources from the operating system. The operating system then uses its hardware drivers to access the CPU, memory storage, and other necessary components to run the application smoothly. This interface ensures applications are hardware independent. Whether you use a laptop or desktop, the application can run effectively because the operating system handles all hardware specific details. And the key takeaway is this. The operating system allows applications to communicate with and use the hardware resources efficiently, making the system user friendly. Now let's talk about disk management. So disk management, this refers to how the operating system manages data storage, access, and organizations on the system's disk drives. And disk management includes the following. So we have what is called partitioning, and this divides a physical storage unit into multiple logic units called partitions, such as separating the operating system from personal files. Then we have formatting, and this prepares the partition space by creating a file system, such as NTFS for Windows, APFS for Mac, or EXT4 for Linux that organizes data. And then we have file organization, and this is for storing files in directories or folders and managing how they are accessed and retrieved. So the operating system also handles this space monitoring to inform the user if storage is running low and provides tools like disk cleanup in Windows to help manage and remove unnecessary files. The disk management functionality is vital to keep the system organized and to ensure that users and applications can quickly and efficiently access stored data. Let's move on to task and process management. So every action on a computer is carried out as a process. When you open a program like a web browser, it is considered a process. The operating system is responsible for managing all these tasks and processes to ensure efficient use of the CPU and memory. And task and process management involves the following. We have multitasking. This is the ability to run multiple processes simultaneously. The operating system switches between tasks rapidly, giving the illusion that they are running concurrently. Then we have priority levels. The operating system assigns priority levels to processes, ensuring that critical system processes get more CPU time than background tasks. And then we have memory allocation. So the operating system assigns memory space to different applications and ensures they don't interfere with each other's data. It also ensures virtual memory to extend physical memory using disk space. So a tool like Task Manager in Windows, this allows you to view running processes, memory usage, CPU utilization and terminate unresponsive applications. Now, the key takeaway is the operating system manages tasks efficiently, ensuring that the system runs smoothly and multitasking is possible without conflicts between processes. The next topic is application management. So operating systems provide a platform for installing, running, and managing software applications. And the operating system is responsible for software installation and removal. So installing applications by copying files to the system and configuring them properly, this allows for clean uninstallation, removing all associated files and settings. Then we have application updates. The operating system may provide a centralized update service for keeping software current, like Windows update or the app store on mac os then it also is responsible for application compatibility so the operating system ensures applications run correctly by providing backward compatibility for older software versions so in summary the operating system ensures that applications are correctly installed run without issues and are kept up to date 
Next, let's discuss device management. So device management, this refers to how the operating system manages hardware devices connected to the system, such as printers, scanners, external drivers, and network cards. The operating system uses drivers, which are software components that allow the operating system to communicate with hardware devices. And device management includes the following. We have driver installation and updates. And this ensures that hardware devices have the correct software drivers installed for optimal functionality. It also includes plug and play. So when a new device is connected to the computer, the operating system detects it and attempts to install the necessary drivers automatically. And it also includes resource allocation. So the operating system assigns resources like input and output ports and memory addresses to connected devices to prevent conflicts. So without proper device management, your computer would be unable to recognize or use hardware components effectively. Next, let's discuss access control. So access control in an operating system refers to the system's ability to control who can access files, folders, and system resources. It's a security measure that helps protect sensitive data and ensures that users have appropriate access to only what they need. And the key aspects of access control are as follows. First one is user accounts. So the operating system provides a way to create and manage user accounts with varying levels of access, such as an administrator account, a standard user, or a guest account. Another aspect is permissions. So permissions control what users can do with files or folders, such as read, write, or execute a file. And then another aspect is authentication. So processes like password protection, biometrics, and two-factor authentication ensure that only authorized users can access them. So the access control features of the operating system are crucial for security, ensuring that data is protected and only authorized users can access sensitive files or settings. All right, finally, let's talk about the different types of operating systems and their purposes. And the first one is a mobile device operating system. And this is designed for smartphones, tablets, and wearable devices. And examples include iOS from Apple and Android from Google. And mobile operating systems, they are optimized for touch input, they have power saving features, and they support application based ecosystems. Then we have desktops and workstation operating systems. These are designed for personal computers used in homes, offices, and schools. Examples include Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And these operating systems, they support a wide range of applications from productivity to entertainment and offer a user-friendly interface for multi-purpose computing. Then we have what is called a server operating system, and this is built for managing network resources, providing services to multiple users, and it runs 24-7. And examples include Windows Server, Linux with server distributions like Ubuntu Server, and Unix-based systems. And server operating systems, they are optimized for stability, security, and performance, supporting features like remote administration, virtualization, and advanced networking. And then we have what is called an embedded operating system. System. These are designed for specific devices or systems that require real-time or dedicated functionality. And examples include RTOS or real-time operating systems, Android for IoT devices, and Linux-based systems like Raspberry Pi operating system. And embedded operating systems, they are found in devices like smart home appliances, industrial machines, medical equipment, and car infotainment systems. So each type of operating system is optimized for its specific environment, ensuring that the hardware it runs on is used effectively and securely. So to wrap all of this up, we've explored the essential roles and functions of operating systems, where they serve as an interface between applications and hardware, they manage storage through disk management, they handle active processes with task and process management, they control software installation and updates through application management, they ensure hardware components function properly via device management, they protect data and system resources with access control, and lastly, we understand the different types of operating systems from mobile to server to embedded systems. So operating systems are the backbone of all computing devices, enabling them to operate effectively and securely. Understanding these functions is a key part of the CompTIA Tech Plus exam, and I hope this breakdown has given you a solid understanding of the purpose of operating systems.
All right. Now, with all of that being said, let's do some of this check on learning. So the first question is, which of the following best describes the role of an operating system as an interface between applications and hardware? Is it the operating system processes data and provides output to the user without interacting with the hardware? Is it the operating system serves as a bridge between applications and hardware, managing the communication between them? Is it the operating system directly controls hardware components without interacting? with applications or is it the operating system only manages applications and ignores hardware management and the correct answer is the operating system serves as a bridge between applications and hardware managing the communications between them so the operating system it acts as an intermediary between applications and hardware ensuring that applications can access hardware resources without needing to manage the complexities of the hardware directly next question what is the primary function of disk management in an operating system? Is it for managing background processes and tasks in the system? Is it for managing installed applications and updates? Is it for organizing and controlling access to files and directories on storage devices? Or is it for configuring device drivers for connected hardware? And the correct answer is it is for organizing and controlling access to files and directories on storage devices. So disk management, this refers to how the operating system organizes, partitions and manages storage devices like hard drives or SSDs, ensuring files and directories are stored and accessed efficiently. And the final question, which of the following operating system types is used for real time dedicated tasks in devices like ATMs or medical equipment? Would it be a desktop operating system, a server operating system, a mobile operating system or an embedded operating system? And the correct answer would be an embedded operating system. So embedded operating systems, they are used in specialized devices like ATMs, medical equipment, and other dedicated hardware. They are optimized for specific functions and operate in real-time environments.